Welcome into the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Senior. The 2022 NFL Draft is officially in the books. The Niners have made nine selections, including Brock Purdy at pick Mr. Irrelevant 262 to officially round out the NFL Draft. Maybe he is a future backup quarterback, but coming up on today's show, draft grades for what the Niners were able to do in the 2022 NFL Draft. So they don't have a first round pick until 2024 because they moved up for Trey Lance. So their first selection was the edge rusher out of USC and Drake Jackson in the third round. They go back to running back in the third round for the second consecutive year. Last year, it was Trey Sermon. This year, it's Ty Davis Price out of LSU. Really physical back. We'll dive more deeper into these prospects throughout today's show. Danny Gray in round three, 105, wide receiver out of SMU. My favorite selection with what the Niners did all throughout the weekend. Spencer Burford, offensive tackle, also plays some guard out of UTSA, going to the Niners at 134. Then there was an interesting run for picks here on day three of the draft for San Francisco. They went Samuel Womack, cornerback out of Toledo, round five, 172. Nick Zakel, offensive guard who played a lot of tackle at Fordham in round six, 187. Kalia Davis, defensive tackle out of UCF, round six, 220, who's only played five games the last two years. Tariq Castro-Fields, round six, 221. Then they rounded out the draft by making a surprising selection. I wanted the Niners to go after Marquise Bell, the safety out of Florida A&M. I thought it fulfilled a need. He's a developmental prospect at that safety position. I think it would have been ideal to see him grow and learn under a really quality veteran in Jimmy Ward, but they shock everybody. They go quarterback with the final pick of the draft, Brock Purdy, a four-year starter out of Iowa State. His upside, absolute best-case scenario, is Colt McCoy, who went into Levi Stadium last year and handed the Niners a devastating L. So let's do grades for all these players, then I'll offer you overall grades. So keep it locked right here on the 49ers report for the best coverage on the San Francisco 49ers. Drake Jackson has been, has burst, He's a pass rusher at his core, doesn't offer much against the run. That's fine with me. He's a twitchy athlete who has a really quick first step off the line of scrimmage. Needs some time to grow and be consistent, but when you're playing on the other side of the line from Nick Bosa, and Nick Bosa is drawing some double teams, so too are some of the interior pass rushers on this Niners defensive line that immediately becomes one of the deepest in the National Football League. Drake Jackson in year one has an opportunity to put forward a season where he could have four to six sacks for the Niners defense. D'Amico Ryans will deploy him in a special way. And Chris Kosarek, I put my faith and trust in him in developing defensive linemen, especially edge rushers. I like the athleticism and the upside. So my grade for the pick of Drake Jackson, I think the Niners went best player available here. They could have gone offensive line. Safeties were off the board with Jalen Petrie and Jaquan Brisker. They go Drake Jackson. My pick for him goes down as a B. We move forward to the third round. A surprising selection once more for the Niners. They go running back in the third round for the second consecutive year, as I talked about. Ty Davis Price. Now, he has a good frame. He's a power running back. He does not fear contact. And immediately in the preseason, and if he gets snaps in the regular season, fans are going to fall in love with this guy because he doesn't fear anybody. He's a straight-up dog. And I love how when you watched him during games, he got stronger as the games progressed. He averaged less than four yards per carry in the first round. But in the second half of games, after recess, five and a half yards per carry. Because of that, he reminds me a little bit of LeGarrette Blunt, who throughout the course of the game, with more carries, as the game went on, he got stronger and stronger. Now, he is not going to give you pass-catching ability. I'm not sure he can be a three-down back. But the young running back core, and we know Kyle Shanahan loves backs, right? Ty Davis Price, Elijah Mitchell, as well as Trey Sermon. That right there, with the combination of Trey Lance, could give the Niners one of the more lethal running games in the National Football League in 2022. Because I thought this was a little bit of a reach, I'm changing my grade from day two. I think you could have had him in round four, round five, maybe even a little bit later, and Isaiah Spiller was still on the board. I would have loved James Cook here. He went in round two. Ty Davis price to the Niners at 93. That is a C-plus grade. Now, this is somewhat of a controversial selection for the Niners. I want to hear from you. Do you like the pick? Type Y for yes, 
Type N for no, get those votes in. And while you're down there, make sure you subscribe to the channel for year-round free daily videos covering the San Francisco 49ers. My favorite selection of the draft, Danny Gray, wide receiver out of SMU. I had him mocked to the Niners in a couple of my mocks. Why is that? Because I wanted him to go to the Bay, and I absolutely love the player. He's an awesome vertical threat, solid athleticism, who has 4-3-4-4 speed. The knock on the athleticism is he's a little bit slight with this frame. Great production after the catch. Kind of like Debo Samuel in that way. Now, he doesn't have the size or the power and the ability to be a running back and run you over like Debo Samuel. But a big reason why I like this pick, despite Danny Gray lacking some power and diversity to his route tree, is that I think Kyle Shanahan is going to find a way to get the football in this guy's hands on jet sweeps, bubble screens, on some crossers open in space to allow him to cater to his strengths, which is making people miss, taking it to the crib, and that pull away speed. Schematically, I love the prospects of what Kyle Shanahan can do with this prospect and Danny Gray. When the pick was made, I was elated as I was live on the 49ers report. This is my only A grade for the nine 49ers picks made so far in 2022. Danny Gray cannot wait to see you in the scarlet red and gold. Make sure you subscribe to the 49ers report as we bring you the best 49ers coverage on YouTube, on the internet, as well as Rumble. We push out videos every single day and throughout the draft, multiple videos per day in a very time sensitive manner. News, rumors, draft coverage, free agency, watch parties. We do it all. Hit that red subscribe button to join the faithful family of the most watched 49ers YouTube channel on the entire internet. Spencer Burford, that is the correct pronunciation. Offensive tackle out of UTSA. I am not surprised that the Niners made this pick at round 4-134 because we knew going into the draft a priority and an area of need was that offensive line. I have questions about Mike McGlinchey coming off the torn quad. I have questions about Trent Williams in like three years. Spencer Burford will still be under contract, but also why I like the selection is that he gives you positional flexibility. Throughout his college career, he played a bunch of games at right tackle, at left tackle, as well as the guard spot. So while he might not be able to be an immediate impact player at tackle, he might be able to step in and play at guard. Four-year starter, 43 starts, very good run blocker, has to get better in pass protection, needs to add a little bit of weight to his frame as he's a little bit more than 300 pounds. But the upside of the pick here, the consistency, the experience, and the versatility, very important for the Niners. My grade for Spencer Burford is going to go down as a B. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I don't dislike it enough to make it an average grade of a C. It fulfills a need, and because of that, I'm going with a B for Spencer Burford. I think he's going to be able to bring something to the table over time. You lost Lakin Tomlinson. You have questions at right guard. Is Mike McGlinchey the tackle of the future? All of these are question marks. Who the hell knows what happens with Alex Mack? That's why I think the 49ers invested in the offensive line during the draft. Round 5, 172. Samuel Womack, cornerback out of Toledo. This guy, folks, is a bona fide stud. And he has great instincts on making plays on the football that a lot of people don't have and you just simply cannot teach. Now, he has five years of college experience at Toledo. And what I find really, really impressive is that he played 51 career games. 31 of those were starts. 46 pass breakups in 51 games. So you just can't teach those natural instincts of getting your hand in there and batting the football down. He is 5'9", 189 pounds, so he's a little bit shorter. Do not expect him to be an outside corner. He could be your K1 Williams replacement, also not afraid to get physical. Because of his instincts, because of the experience, because of the fact that he was a team captain at Toledo and bring some really important traits to the table. I'm giving this pick an A grade. So I lied to you. I lied to you as a tease. I said, Danny Gray, the only A grade. I'm going A for Samuel Womack as well. If you love the San Francisco 49ers, because if you're watching this video, how do you not love 
one of the most iconic franchises in all of sports. If you love the Niners and you love our coverage and you love our videos, and if you love me, then hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. We move forward to round six, pick 187. And what the Niners did here was pretty interesting, right? They went back to offensive line after they had already selected an offensive lineman earlier in Burford. Now, I like Burford a little bit better than Zach Zakel, the offensive guard who's being listed as a guard now who went to Fordham. Now, like Burford, a bunch of college experience, obviously at the FCS level, 11 games played in 2021, three sacks allowed. He's 6'6", ran around a five-second 40-yard dash. He's a little bit slow. That's why I think he's going to go from tackle to guard. But again, that positional versatility is a little bit intriguing for me because he could play a couple of positions along that offensive line. I personally would have gone Marquise Bell here. I wanted to go safety at some point in this draft. Now, the things didn't really fall in the Niners' favor because Brisker, Petrie, Nick Cross went to the Colts. All of these players kind of went off the board, and I think that's why the Niners did not go with safety. So they go offensive line here. I didn't think they needed to. We'll see what happens with him. Round 6, 220. As we continue to move forward in our draft gates for San Francisco, Kalia Davis, defensive lineman out of UCF. He's 24 years old. He's only played five games the last two years. He was a 2020 COVID opt-out and did suffer a torn ACL that he had to get operated on in the fall. For his size of 6'1", 302 pounds, yes, he's a little bit stubby. Yes, he's a little bit short. He does have some explosiveness. He also does have a little bit of extra weight that is unwanted weight. That is unproductive weight. A lot of us watching and me talking, a lot of us can shed some of that unwanted weight and unnecessary weight, right? But when you're playing in the NFL and your job is on the line and your job is to stay in shape, you have to shed some pounds. And you have to become a little bit more leaner. I'd like to see that from Kalia Davis. The intrigue is certainly there. The ability is certainly there. As a defensive tackle, and get off the line of scrimmage and beat guys on one-on-one -on -one blocks and shed them. I like it. But coming off the torn ACL, given some of the effort concerns, he opted out in 2020. I'm going to give this a C grade. What I really like is this next pick that we're about to get to, Tariq Castro-Fields, cornerback out of Penn State. Now, if you're wanting him to be a cornerback safety hybrid, it's not going to happen. And I would have loved for the Niners to pinpoint one of those players who can play both of those positions. That's why I like Marquise Bell. You can put him at safety deep. You can also put him as a box safety, set him in on some blitz packages. He can cover tight ends and get physical. He ain't scared at all. But the Niners go to recast your fields here. And I happen to really like this selection as well. He has a lot of upside. 4-3, 40-yard dash. As for why he fell to round six, because there are reasons for why he fell to the sixth round. He gets a little bit too over-aggressive, and sometimes he overcompensates, and sometimes he bites on routes, and that does get him in trouble. But the 4-3 speed has some length. I also have faith, and I also have trust in a program in Penn State that I got to see the inner workings of with my previous job. I got to cover Penn State football, and they do a great job in the weight room with weight training. And with just developing prospects of turning these guys into good professional players, I think Tariq Castro-Fields down the line could be a pretty solid number two cornerback or number three cornerback. And if you get that type of caliber player in the sixth round, that's pretty good value. Last selection to get to for the Niners here in the draft. It's Brock Purdy, pick Mr. Irrelevant at 262, the final pick of the NFL draft. I was surprised by it. I would have gone Marquise Bell as I talked about. And it sounded like I have a man crush on Marquise Bell. Maybe I do. I watch a lot of tape on the guy. And I understand he played at the FCS level. But for Brock Purdy, his upside and the best case scenario is him becoming a Colt McCoy type. He can be a backup quarterback in this league. Has a lot of experience. He's somewhat athletic. He's a little bit too short. Sometimes the lack of height hurts him in the pocket because he can't really see the field well. What does that lead to? Him holding on to the football, him getting sacked. Now, he's able to escape some of that pressure with some of that athleticism, but he doesn't have a great arm. 
And his athleticism, while it's good, it can also get him in trouble because sometimes he relies on it too much and he tries to buy too much time in the pocket. Now, I like his pocket instincts. I like his pocket feel. And if you go Brock Purdy here, and he can be your backup quarterback after you move on from Jimmy Garoppolo behind Trey Lance, this is a guy, considering the experience, who can win you a game or two in a pinch. And I think Kyle Shanahan's excited to work with a player like this. I mean, he did wonders with Nick Mullins. He did good work with C.J. Beathard. Can he do some good work with Brock Purdy? I imagine Kyle Shanahan is excited to get youth into that quarterback room to see what he can do and tinker with with Brock Purdy. So that does it for our 49ers 2022 NFL draft grades. My overall grade for the 49ers with all nine of these selections, I am going B. And it seems as though this has been the common consensus among everybody throughout our live show. I've asked the audience. I've hit up people who have hit me up on Twitter and on Instagram. And I've like, I've asked them, what would you do? What would your grade be? I'm going B. Nothing special. Nothing bad. I don't think there was any pick that was a disaster. Ty Davis Price, a little bit of a reach. But Kyle Shanahan and once Bobby Turner comes back, given the offensive scheme, they just have this innate ability for any running back they get their hands on for those guys to be impact players. I mean, Elijah Mitchell was a six-round pick, and he was top five in rushing yards per game. So I think that's what the Niners see there. That was a little bit of a reach, but other than that, you fulfilled positions of need outside of safety. Does that mean that Jimmy Ward's going to be here for the long haul? Maybe Jaquaski Tart is back. Could they go after a player like Tyron Matthew? Probably not because of the money factor there. B grade, you let me know what the Niners do. Also, one more note, I'm thinking that Alex Mack returns because they didn't address center either. We'll see. Now, if they don't address center elsewhere and Alex Mack does retire, maybe my grade goes down to a C. But right now, it's a B. You let me know your grades in the comments section. And thanks so much for watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports Undrafted Free Agents video coming on Sunday.